Okay, so this talk follows on a little bit from the previous one that I did entitled Snowball Earth and started off as the overspill material but uh, has rather grown into a quite a long talk in its own right. The more I dug into this subject of death from above, the more there seemed to be to talk about. So we might repeat one or two bits from the Snowball Earth, but uh, not too many, I hope. So anyway, death from above. The Earth began 4,600 million years ago, formed out of the solar nebula by the uh, gravitational attraction, pulling in lots of space rocks, bits of dirt and dust and making them crash into each other, gradually building larger and larger objects. And the combination of the energy of those impacts and the fact that during the first periods of the Earth's life, an awful lot of the uh, elements that went into forming the solar nebula came from a previous supernova explosion and were highly radioactive. So there was a lot of aluminium 26 and potassium 40 with uh, life uh, half-lives that would give off energy to keep the interior of the earth molten for quite a long time, all the way up to the present day, in fact. But if we have a look at the, uh, the whole history of the earth on one chart, you can see that the uh, geologists have divided time from left to right into these uh, large periods with smaller e eras between them. And the smaller eras really only run for the last 600 million years or so. After that, everything before that was the pre-Cambrian and really was uh, devoid of large fossils. And so it was uh, very much the case that fossils and the nature of the species that you were looking at, in particular ages of rocks, defined the period that you were in. That's a quite a curious thing when you think about it, because it means that somehow all those dividing lines between those different periods mark changes in the contents of the biosphere. Suddenly, a whole lot of uh, groups of plants and animals would disappear and be re replaced by new ones. So you've got a very strongly punctuated evolution going on. But the big blank bit to the left from 4,600 to 600 million years represents about 70% of the uh, life of Earth and was largely ignored because there weren't any major fossils. But what we are finding is there are lots of micro fossils of single celled creatures and uh, the history of that period is becoming more and more uncovered as we go further and further into it. So that Precambrian period actually contained uh, the origin of life itself somewhere right back at the, the way back at the beginning and then largely was single celled organisms but within that single cell there were processes evolving and changes being made and uh, around about 2,000 million years ago the first plants or the first uh, photosynthetic creatures came into existence. They weren't really plants yet, they were blue-green algae. So we can see that there about 2,500 million years ago life invented photosynthesis and you can see on the big line, uh, the wiggly line along the bottom there, that the climate changed quite dramatically at that point and this this graph is perhaps upside down it's warm at the bottom and colder towards the top as regards the wiggly line and so the uh, earth's uh, environment was cooling and then suddenly cooled dramatically and that was the invention of uh, photosynthesis giving off oxygen as a byproduct and the oxygen reacted with a lot of the original methane, the CH4, that the Earth's atmosphere contained, oxidizing it to carbon dioxide and indeed having it then precipitate out as calcium carbonate into the bottoms of the oceans. And methane is an extremely powerful greenhouse gas 
uh, you get much more greenhouse effect warming for one molecule of methane than you do from one molecule of carbon dioxide. And so the removal of uh, the methane, once the oxygen finally built up to enough of a level, uh, caused that uh, very dramatic swing in the climate. In fact, one of the mitigating effects for all of that was the fact that uh, the ocean contained lots of iron. And I talked about this in the Snowball Earth lecture. And around about that time, we see huge formations of this banded iron where the iron dissolved in the oceans was reacting with oxygen and being deposited as uh, layers of uh, rusty rock. Eventually, the, the uh, iron in the ocean was largely exhausted. That's when the oxygen built up in the air and took care of the methane and caused uh, a snowball effect to happen. The first of the great green, uh, great uh, snowball earth events 2,400 million years ago, the Huronian snowball event, where the planet almost completely, if not completely, froze over and stayed that way for many tens of millions of years. And as I described in the Snowball Earth, it would be rescued by the output of carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere because volcanoes don't stop. And in the ancient times of the Earth, the volcanoes were much more active than they are now because there was that much more heat in the middle of the Earth trying to get out. And so fairly quickly, a lot of carbon dioxide was put back into the atmosphere and probably built up to the point where it was 10 or 20 times the level of CO2 that we have today. And that would then reverse the ice house effect, uh, create a greenhouse effect in the atmosphere and melt the ice and tip things back into a very, very warm period. But the result of all of that oxygen going into the atmosphere opened up the uh, possibility of a whole new range of uh, biochemical processes for life. Uh, a lot of creatures before that couldn't really cope with, with oxygen and didn't like it. It was a, a nasty poisonous byproduct. But once it, it uh, became prevalent, life soon learned to use it and love it instead and uh, use it as a means of carrying out a lot more interesting reactions. Now the first event of death from the skies really is the largest crater on earth, um, 190 miles across in South Africa, the Vredevoort crater, and this impacted around about 2,000 million years ago. It's the third oldest known crater, um, but it is the largest of all, and that must have caused absolute mayhem to the environment with the amount of uh, material thrown up into the atmosphere. We talked in the Snowball Earth event uh, of uh, 600 million years ago, we talked through those in the previous uh, lecture and the fact that uh, three or more times life nearly got wiped out by a complete freeze out and it seems that each time that opened up the opportunities for life to evolve. It uh, wiped away the slime world of that single celled uh, only period and opened life up to having many more opportunities armed with the biochemistry of based on oxygen. So suddenly the number of complicated species exploded during the Cambrian period, 545 to 488 million years ago. Um, but towards the end of that period, three bad events happened. Uh, they're marked there with the orange bars. There were three rounds of uh, extinctions which uh, came along. And one of those is possibly this crater. It's a little bit indistinct, but it's the Akraman crater in Australia. You can see the circular outline of it here and out, an outer ring there. It's quite a large crater, it's 50 miles across and that turned up uh, an asteroid hit the earth 580 million years ago, possibly during one of the latter periods 
of the snowball event. So uh, it might have been coincident with it. But uh, life was flourishing uh, in, the, in the Cambrian and uh, lots of complicated creatures were first to appear. This chap at the top of the screen here, this is Inomina Caris with his enormous jaws and uh, eyes on stalks. And then down at the bottom here, trundling around on the sea floor, were the top predators of the uh, period, the trilobites. They uh, first appeared at that point. So here's a, a fossilized trilobite, and uh, they ruled the earth for about 270 million years. They're one of the most successful species to ever evolve. And uh, they survived a whole range of different uh, nasty events due to their lifestyle. I think the uh, only surviving relative of them are the wood lice that we have today. One of the things that then occurred to the earth was these vast lava eruptions, these fl flood basalt uh, eruptions. And we think these occurred for those three phases towards the end of the Cambrian. And we'll come back to that later because uh, we, we might have some ideas about wh what caused these uh, vast lava eruptions. But the Cambrian gave way to the next period, the Ordovician era, where life really got uh, going again. And you've got all sorts of interesting sea crabs, uh, the large nautiloid creature there with its tentacles, all sorts of things, all with uh, much more active than they had been in the past. And this period lasted some 40 million years from 488 to 444 million years ago. But in the middle of it, something very nasty happened. And this was 465 million years ago. And another huge ice age, another snowball earth event occurred. Not necessarily a complete one, but nevertheless, a giant ice age. Global temperatures nose dived, ice built up and advanced towards the equator. Uh, sea le levels dropped dramatically with so much water being locked up as ice on land and uh, the, the temperature plummeted. But this time the cause was not the usual continental drift to the, of land over the poles. This time it was death from space. In this formation of rock that you see over to the right there is a grey layer, I'll use the mouse pointer, just along here, it's a very thin grey line here, in the layers of sedimentary rock from the ancient seabed. And it's full of micro diamonds and asteroid dust and all sorts of heavy metals and strange materials. And the reason that it's there is because it all fell from space. Now we see meteorites, so we've been looking for our uh, aquarid and uh, lyrid meteor showers just recently. And normally Earth gains about 100 tonnes of extraterrestrial uh, fragments falling in every day, which is 40,000 tonnes a year. But suddenly, around about 465 million years ago, the rate of uh, infalling of this material went up by a factor of 3,000 times. Here's a chart of the uh, amount of material falling in from the very ancient times through to now. And you can see that uh, there is a big spike of material falling in uh, called the Ordovician impact spike here about 465 million years ago. We've got some examples here. There's a couple of meteorites that are embedded in rock of that age, along with the fossil of one of those nautiloid creatures with the shell and the tentacles out the front, showing that it's exactly the right age for this uh, nautiloid to have died at the same time as this uh, meteor came in and got trapped and became a fossil meteorite. And we find them in this layer um, in, the, in the rock across here. And when we look at them, 99% of the meteorites are all of the same type. They're all these L chondrites material. 
is an example of an L chondrite. And we believe these all came from the same period. They're, they date to the same age of 467 million years. And there are a terrific number of them. 38% of all the meteorites on Earth are L chondrites. And we think that they are the remnants of a parent body, a small planetoid that was shattered in a giant impact out in the asteroid belt somewhere and a lot of the fragments came our way. In fact we're pretty sure that the asteroid flora, there's a three photographs of it there, and we're pretty sure that this was part of the same family. It's made of the same material, the l crondite material, and we think that uh, actually there was a parent body of the flora family, including flora and gaspara and several other large asteroids and about 13,000 other small fragments that we're tracking out in the asteroid belt. And so uh, these were all the product of this enormous impact where whatever the parent body was, perhaps a planetoid 100 kilometers in diameter orbiting out in the inner part of the, the asteroid belt was hit and shattered into millions of fragments creating flora, gaspara, ariadne, all sorts of uh, bits and pieces and an awful lot of them came suddenly into the inner solar system and bombarded the earth over a period of about a million years. Here's a couple of crater lakes in Canada. The east lake, the left hand one, is uh, no, sorry, the right hand one is dated at 465 million years and we think is part of this event. Uh, the West Lake on the left there with the islands in the middle is younger at 286 million years ago. So it's uh, part of a later impact, just happened to land in the same place. But this uh, East Lake's not the only crater we have from that time. The Earth is peppered with them and they, they started being a, a lot of large craters from just 470 million years ago with the Ames crater, then the Granby crater, then there's a whole series in Sweden, and then some more in Canada, all going through that, that same period of uh, 10 to 20 million years. So you can imagine all of this material was flying around. Thousands of small bits were falling into the atmosphere and causing the atmosphere to be covered in dust. And that is why the Ice Age began. It was a dust-induced problem blocking out.